The way chemotherapy works is that it kills cancer cells, and cancer cells are the rapidly dividing cells. But unfortunately, it can also affect normal cells. And when it affects those normal cells, you can develop some side effects. Not everyone who has chemotherapy has side effects, but it does vary from individual to individual. Most people will get mild symptoms, which can be managed quite well with supportive drugs. One of the side effects of chemotherapy is that it can affect the white blood cells and red blood cells in the bloodstream. And the white blood cells are very important because they fight infection. When you've had chemotherapy, if the white blood cells fall very significantly and you get an infection, then that can be quite a serious infection. And that's something called neutropenic sepsis. To try and prevent that from happening, what we do is we do a number of blood tests before chemotherapy and sometimes after chemotherapy to check on the level of white blood cells and red cells in the blood. It is very important that you have a good thermometer at home and if you feel unwell or you feel shivery or you think you've got an infection on board, that you measure your temperature. Um, if you have a fever of over 38 degrees, you turn up to your local A&E department and make sure you take your chemotherapy hotline card with you so that the team in, in the emergency department know that you have had chemotherapy and that you're at a risk of neutropenic sepsis. However, if you don't have a temperature of 38 but you still feel unwell, then do either contact your team team or the chemotherapy hotline 24-7. Nausea is a common side effect of chemotherapy, but it doesn't happen with all chemotherapy drugs. It does depend on your regime. If it is a common side effect, you will be given anti-sickness drugs before the chemotherapy and usually given anti-sickness drugs to go home with, including steroids such as dexamethasone. We do recommend that you take them as prescribed. Don't wait for those symptoms to develop because if you're vomiting, you can imagine trying to swallow a pill and trying to keep that down is very difficult. So it's better to have it preventatively. Drink regularly to stay well hydrated. And sometimes patients find it's easier and better to eat little and often and avoid very large meals um, as that can really make them feel quite sick. Anti-sickness drugs should help to reduce the risk of any nausea or vomiting, but if you can't keep anything down, if you're unable to eat or drink, then you must contact us Oncology Hotline and we can advise you further. You may notice a change in taste once on chemotherapy. Other patients report becoming more sensitive to smells, which can make them feel sick. Some tips to help with this include eating hard or chewy sweets whilst receiving chemotherapy to manage the metallic taste that patients report. Trying different foods, perhaps with more flavour, for example citrus or spice. And reducing cooking smells, perhaps by someone else doing the cooking or trying microwave meals. Fatigue or tiredness is one of the commonest side effects um, of chemotherapy. It's very important that you speak to your chemotherapy nurse and your team about it, who might recommend that you make a note of your energy levels through a fatigue diary. Um, they might also give you some strategies and advice on how to manage your energy levels. Patients often feel tired, especially in the first 14 days after the treatment, which is quite natural. But strangely enough, we ask our patients to do a bit of exercise, like gentle walk every day, 20 minutes is good. It actually boosts your level of energy and enables you to be less fatigued during the rest of the days. We, we sometimes advise patients to keep up diary so they, they know how to plan their gap in between treatments so when they want to do something special they know where they are at best levels of energy to do so. When on chemotherapy you may get a sore mouth and or mouth ulcers but there are things you can do to try and prevent this such as brushing with a soft or electric toothbrush twice a day and continuing to use non-alcoholic based mouthwashes if you use them. For ulcers, doing salt water mouthwashes four times a day can help. You can also get advice from a pharmacist or your clinical team regarding mouthwashes used to numb ulcers and encourage healing. If you notice white patches in your mouth, this could be the sign of an infection called thrush, and you might need some medicine to treat it. Again, a pharmacist or your clinical team can give you the advice you need. We recommend that you see your dentist to get any dental work needed before starting on chemotherapy. If you do need to see a dentist whilst you're on treatment, you should first contact your clinical team or call the acute oncology service. 
Some chemotherapy drugs can cause hair loss, um, but certainly not all chemotherapy drugs. So your team will inform you whether the drugs that you're going to be having will cause hair loss. It can range from hair thinning to hair loss, but when hair loss occurs, it usually occurs within two to three weeks after your first treatment's been delivered, and it tends to be total body hair loss. So you will lose your eyebrows, your eyelashes, your body hair, as well as the hair on your head. There's plenty of options. You don't have to use a wig, but if you want so, we can refer you to, um, to a professional that will go through what type of wigs. But you can use a scarf, you can use a hat. So you can be imaginative and try to see what suits you best and what's your, the best option for you. But the important thing is to know that after you finish treatment, the hair will go back. Sometimes slightly different in color or the way it appears, but it will come back. There is a way to try and reduce the risk of hair loss using scalp cooling or a cold cap and that's put on your head, stays on for the duration of the treatment and it's removed afterwards. It doesn't always work but it has shown to reduce the risk of hair loss. If that's important to you we would encourage you to discuss that with your clinical team before you start treatment. It is also possible whilst on chemotherapy to experience constipation, difficulty pooing or diarrhoea, runny or loose poo. We can prescribe laxatives to help with constipation, but also drinking lots of fluids, eating plenty of fruit and vegetables, and keeping active can all help to manage constipation. If you experience mild diarrhoea, which is less than four times a day, your clinical team can advise you on medication you can get to help manage it. If you are opening your bowels more than four times in 24 hours, you should call the emergency advice hotline, who may then ask you to come to hospital to be assessed. Another side effect are blood clots. Blood clots usually can present in the leg or in the lung or even in the arm. So if you get a swollen, painful leg or arm or you get short of breath or chest pain, we do advise you to come to hospital or contact the Oncology 24-7 helpline. Blood clots are easily treatable and manageable, but it's really important that we treat them soon because they can result in serious complications if left untreated. You may notice some changes to your skin and nails whilst on treatment. Your skin may become drier. To help with this, we recommend using sun protection cream whilst on chemotherapy and for six months after treatment. You may also notice that your skin, nails and veins become darker in colour whilst on treatment. This is usually temporary and is nothing to worry about. If you notice oozing surrounding your nails, it may be a sign of infection so please contact your clinical team. The fact that you've been diagnosed with something like cancer and you do treatments will of course affect you physically and emotionally. It's okay to feel that you struggle, it's okay to feel that you're not capable to go through, through things just by yourself and in that case I would advise you to talk to us so we can refer you to some specialist team so you can cope with things and go through everything that you're feeling or your family is feeling. Do talk to your family, do accept help because some people they don't want to do that because um, they feel that you know what they are bothering their families but any help, any help that you can get, please get it. Talking about things will help you have the tools to go through the treatment and go through the diagnosis of cancer. There's a lot of information out there about chemotherapy and not all of it is accurate and there's a lot of fear about chemotherapy. But I'd like to reassure you that chemotherapy is very much achievable. Um, we have hundreds and thousands of patients who get through chemotherapy in this country and around the world. Chemotherapy is much better tolerated than it used to be. There are supportive medications which help you feel better. There is advice that you can have 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And there are also changes and amendments that can be made to your chemotherapy by which we can make the whole experience for you much easier. The majority of patients will not get all of the side effects that we have listed. Be reassured that before every treatment, we will discuss the side effects that you've had and we will try and improve them for the next cycle of treatment. When you go into the chemo ward, you know, you think it's going to be really stark and serious, but it wasn't. The nurses were 
really joyful and interested in you. They couldn't have been more welcoming and caring, really. And then it was just a very bizarre experience sitting in chairs with this cold fluid going into me and the bags emptying on the drips. And there was no, I didn't feel ill, I didn't feel frightened, I didn't feel wheezy or woozy or anything like that. It was very relaxed. And then when that was finished, off we popped and went home. The first round of chemotherapy that I had was explained to me as known to be quite dramatic. The reality was that I responded really well to the drug and I still managed to get up for my Pilates class the next day because part of my thinking before I started the chemotherapy was that if I'm actually going to deal with this, then I've got to look at what they tell me, um, remember what they tell me, and get my body into the best shape it possibly can be. I also thought that searching the internet for information was unhelpful. For me, it was important that any information or any queries that I had, I needed to direct them to the clinical team. The side effects were the hair loss and it affected my digestive system and I found myself eating smaller meals more frequently. One of the best bits of advice that I can give you is to give yourself a treat every day. And I did. So um, whether it was a bit of chocolate or something that I was really going to enjoy. Then I started my second course of treatment, but unfortunately, my body didn't like that particular drug. My temperature rose and I called the oncology emergency number. They were the ones that said, you need to go to the major's unit at A&E. And they dealt with me absolutely fantastically. I spoke to the oncology department and they reduced the dosage. My advice would be to realise that you're an individual and have an individual genetic makeup. And because something happened to one person, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen to you. I take great comfort in knowing that my family care that they, you know, support me when they know I've got a treatment. And I think it really helps. So it's important to know that there are lots and lots of charities and, and support groups that are really, really helpful. You can have complementary therapies. You know, when my, when my hand was really sore from the cannula, someone who massaged my arm and chatted to me, those, those things really, really made a difference. So it's not just, for example someone giving you a massage, it's someone giving you the attention you deserve. It's not a nice experience, but there are things that will help you through it.